Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're talking with competitive shooter Barry Brakebill about his recent national championship win. Barry is a longtime muzzleloading industry veteran. He's worked with Thompson Center and Knight, and he's most recently began working with CVA as one of their first sponsored shooters to compete at the national level. Just this last week, Barry proved that the Paramount can bring home the gold when he won the inline hunter aggregate. This is a match set up specifically for the modern inline rifles for, for hunters and modern muzzleloading enthusiasts to get a little taste of the competitive scene. We're going to talk with Barry about his time with CVA, about the rifle, and as well as some shooting tips out there for you if you're interested in getting a little bit more precise with your muzzleloader. And I think a lot of these tips don't necessarily pertain exclusively to modern muzzleloaders. So if you're interested in just being a better marksman in general, you're going to want to hear some of the tips that Barry has coming ahead here. Well, Barry, could you give me a little bit of a rundown of of what the matches were like for you this spring at the Nationals? You know, what what matches were you shooting in and what were you shooting and, and how'd it go? Well, of course, we were shooting the uh, inline hunter match, the national match. Uh, we also shot the long range, short range match, which that is uh, you're shooting uh, four targets for that. And it's a 50 um, yard target shot at 100 yards twice. And then it's a 100 yard target shot at 200 yards twice. Of course, then the inline hunter match is a uh, you're shooting uh, five shots for score at 50 yards, five for score at uh, 100 yards, and five for score at uh, 200 yards. And then we shoot the animals where we're shooting 200 meters and 300 meters. Of course, the chickens and pigs. And that's that's all five matches uh, rolled into one event. Okay. And, uh, of course, I was uh, shooting the new uh, Paramount uh, from CVA. It's it's not a big secret. I moved on from uh, the last venture and uh, am now shooting for them. And uh, was very very excited to uh, to bring a new gun and uh, to the event and to. Uh, to win the national title so it's, it's it's been a good week yeah man that's that's exciting so you brought home i mean the gold in the inline hunter aggregate then of, of all those yes. matches rolled together yes wow yep and that's kind of a grueling course of fire i mean it's not like you can you're guaranteed perfect conditions to go out and shoot that series of matches i mean you've got to kind of pick your battles on the weather is that right Absolutely. And, and, you know, this year was, uh, unbelievable. Uh, we had rain about every day. Uh, then we had wind blowing. Um, it was, uh, it was pretty rough conditions and it, uh, it took its toll on a lot of shooters that, uh, that don't normally come up there and shoot. And, uh, so, but, uh, there was some very stiff competition as always, uh, but uh, had a lot of fun, and like I said, it was uh, it was a great time. And of course, anytime I get to come to Friendship, it's just it's very exciting. Yeah. Know? And you were shooting the forty caliber, is that right? I, that's exactly right. I, okay. was. I was shooting new forty caliber. So what do you what do you think and, of that? Uh, I mean, you've shot quite a few rifles over the years. What do you think about about the new Paramount and forty, and kind of the resurgence of interest in a forty caliber muzzleloader? Well, uh, you know. I'm shooting a little less powder than I have in the past, um, but I'm shooting and and I've and I was I was up there uh, three or four weeks ago and I shot in the uh, um, what they call the steel challenge match they had, which mm-hmm. we're shooting all steel targets. We start at 300 meters, uh, then we go to 400 meters, and then we go to 500 yards. And uh, I brought that gun specifically to see how it would how it would operate, and uh, it was uh, it did a really good job. I cleaned all the uh, the targets at 300 meters. I missed a couple of uh, turkeys, but then I cleaned everything at 500 yards. And I was shooting the uh, uh, ELRs, mm-hmm. the 225 grain ELR uh, bullet. Uh, traveling around 2270, uh, 2270 feet per second. I'm shooting uh, a, a real simple load, 78.5 grains of black horn, of course, with that bullet. And it, it performed really good. Um, and it's a really good shooting bullet. Uh, it's not a match bullet. It's designed for hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I changed it out a little bit when I came back to the Nationals. And um, I shot uh, a um, 250 grain bullet, uh, Emax. Uh, from Bob Parker. Okay, yeah. And uh, 
but the gun performed uh, it, it performed uh, flawlessly. Hmm. I've been wondering about the forty caliber for kind of that long range steel game, and I guess my only hesitation with it was when you get out there to four and five hundred yards. It, if it doesn't have enough weight to knock those targets over because you might be able to, you know, ring just a standing target, but for those matches, you have to knock it off the rail. And it sounds like you didn't have any trouble with that. I did not. I was, I, I felt really confident with it. Uh, I only shot one Ram in the practice. I came up on Friday night and I shot a couple of times. And of course there was a lot of guys there, you know, showing interest, wanting to see what I was shooting because they knew I was shooting something new. Mm-hmm. And I hit, uh, I hit one of the rams, and it didn't knock it off the wall. And I thought, oh, well, this is not good, you know. Right. Uh, tomorrow, but, uh, but what was, you know, I up powder just to, which gave me a little more muzzle velocity. Um, so I did that, and it worked off a well. And then after we got finished, we shot the apex match, hunter match, and. Um, so we were shooting five inch, a five inch square, a four inch square, a three inch square, and a two and a half inch square at 500 yards, knocking metal plates off. And uh, I hit the five inch square uh, and knocked it off um, and then missed the next one, which took me out of the match. But out of all of the shooters, there were three of us that tied with the first one, knocking the first one off. And that was Jeff Fisk and uh, J.R. Schultz and myself. And then, uh, they are, and I missed the next target, <laughs> uh, and Jeff just kid it and won uh, that event. But uh, but it's a it's a really good gun, and I, I tell you, everybody was asking me, you know, what the secret to to getting that gun to shoot, and I said, well, you know, for me, most people like to tell the gun what they want to shoot in it, uh-huh. and for me, I like the gun to tell. And so um, I have a lab radar. Uh, and I normally, what I started out with this gun was I ran a Saturday test, which is I would start out with 70 grains, then go to 75, then 80, then 85. And I would work my way up until mm-hmm. I stopped seeing any muzzle velocity raises, which tells me that it doesn't matter how much powder you put in it, your barrel's only going to burn so much. So you're either wasting powder or you're burning it efficiently. Okay. And then when I found out uh, what worked the best as far as um, the amount of powder. Then I came back and I started running three shot groups and looking at my S's and ES's. And of course, any time that I get a, a you know a standard DVA of less than ten, it tells me that the gun is operating and shooting well. And um, so then I start looking for groups sizes and all that. So uh, you know I spent a little more time with this gun than than I have in. Um, of course, you know, there was a lot of pressure on to winning the national title last year, coming back and repeating winning it back to back. You know, that's always a tough thing to do with, with the group that we shoot with. Oh, yeah, that's a tough group. So what was it like? I mean, you were, the, I think, in modern times here, the first guy to bring a CVA rifle to a national competition like this, you know. Was there a lot of pressure with that, or, or I mean, you you were testing this at competitions beforehand. You know, was it kind of a head game for yourself to to go through that, or was it just kind of another another trip to the range for you, changing rifles and then being the first to bring a CVA to national competition? Well, everybody that I talked to when they heard I'd made the change from Knight to CVA said, man, you just won a national title. Why are you changing guns and changing bullets? And, you know, and I said, well, you know, I just felt like it was time to do something different. And so uh, I knew they had a good product. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know if it was just that wasn't a game they really thought they wanted to be in or not. And so um, uh, after I made uh, contact with them, of course, they didn't seek me out. I sought them out. And... um, so they uh, they agreed to uh, take me on, and of course, we didn't really say a whole lot to anybody about it because I wanted to get my hands on one of the guns and start doing running some tests on. It. I did, and I found out that it's a really big gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, are there uh, any perfect guns? No, there's not. You're going to find little things, but there's nothing that you couldn't fix, or nothing that. Um, uh, that will keep you from uh, competing at that level. And well, I took it, um, 
I shot in the Tennessee match. We sponsor a match, Mm -hmm. or I do. I sponsor a match uh, twice a year. I do one in the uh, spring and then one in the fall. And um, so we and we have a lot of competitors, national competitors that come south just to shoot in our event. And um, so I shot with it down there and uh, shot a perfect 170 score and got beat on an X count by J.R. Schultz. But the fact that I could take that gun and shoot a perfect score, all bullseyes, I mean, I thought, well, okay, now I just need to tighten things up a little bit and, and uh, work on my shooting ability. So, uh, And I did a couple little things to the gun. I put a jewel trigger in it. Okay. And, uh, you know, I did a couple little things like that. But it's just, you know, cosmetic stuff, stuff that I like and stuff that I'm used to. Uh, and, uh, man, the gun really performed flawlessly and I'm just excited about being a part of the CVA family. Absolutely. I, I gotta ask because there've been a, some questions and things out there on the forums. I mean, you haven't modified like the barrel or the ignition system. Have you? I mean, no, no, that's what I, that's kind of what I thought on it. But, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to ask that question. I appreciate you ask you. I appreciate you answering that. Um, I think that kind of clears up some of the questions some folks had out there on it and on the performance of it. Um, like I said, I mean, I've been I've been following your your journey here with this because I I'm really excited about the idea of more people having access to a muzzleloader that can shoot like this. And I think right. it, it, it makes the sport more accessible, and it makes the national competition scene a little more interesting. Knowing that you don't have to come in with a two or three thousand dollar full custom setup, or even more than that, well, really, I, to to well, compete. I was going to say you haven't checked the prices on that. Because <laughs> the going rate on those guns are anywhere from four to six thousand. Okay. And, uh, and and I'm embarrassed to tell you I own one of those too, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, They're cool. My wife's not listening to this podcast, so that's okay. But, uh, you know, I, uh, there was a lot of people tried to get me to, uh, to look at, uh, Lou Cork's, uh, breech plug system. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, I'm going to stick with the bare flame system. Uh, I'm not having any problem with it. Uh, so it's, it's working. Um, I'm shooting a standard large rifle primer, uh, not shooting the Magnum primers, which is something I've done in the past. Uh, I found that the large rifle primer uh, seems to give me a little better accuracy than the Magnum ones. So, um, but like I said, I'm not pushing the recommended load of 105 grains. Yeah, you're considerably less than that. Yes, I am. I'm I'm at 78.5 by weight, which, you know, uh, our rules and regulations says it's uh, 120 by volume. Mm -hmm. or it's uh, 84 grains by weight. So, um, and I've just found that most guns, they seem to operate pretty good within that, you know, that range. And uh, when you have to shoot X's, you really need the accuracy. And and we're in a game now where it's all about the X's. You know, I can remember four years ago. I mean, uh, of course, I finished third in 2017, I finished second in 2018. 2019, we didn't shoot because of COVID. Uh, 2020, I finished second behind Doug Swartz. And then, of course, 21, I won it. And 22, I've won it. And uh, one of the things I found that uh, five years ago, a 166 or a 167 or a 168 would win the national title. For the last three events, uh, you could shoot a perfect score 170 and finish fourth. Hmm. And so that tells you that not only is the equipment getting better, but the shooters are becoming better yes. and the products are becoming better. And so now the only thing that we're having to fight uh, is how to find black horn, of course. And I know I've listened to some of your podcasts. It's, it's a difficult thing to find, but then also changing, um, uh, the different lot numbers in powder are giving or producing different muzzle velocity. So right. if you can't see, if you, if you've got your gun set up at, let's say for instance, lot 39 and now lot 41 comes in. Um, I mean, I found that I'm having to up the powder or down the powder just to stay at the muzzle velocity that I was with the last lot of powder. So, you know, there's some technical challenges there that we have to deal with as shooters that, um, Seems to be, uh, I mean, we can work it out, but it, it's, I just wish they'd start turning some of that powder loose. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> How much do you typically burn in a competition season like this? Well, 
you know, that's really funny because that you asked that, uh, normally I would burn anywhere from, uh, total year round. Of course I shoot in four events a year, four mm-hmm. to five events a year. And I would shoot, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about, uh, 10 pounds. Wow. Uh, back, back when, uh, well, uh, just wait, you ain't heard wow yet. But, <laughs> uh, I, um, uh, last year in route to the national competition, I spent a whole lot of time preparing a whole lot, a lot of time shooting and I shot 25 pounds. Now that's not, that's not 25 jugs. That's 25 pounds. Because the jugs are only 10 ounces. Yes. They're only 10 ounces, but I was getting them in in five pound jugs. Right. And I, I shot 25 pounds last year in route to the national championship. And, uh, so, but you know, this year because of the powder, uh, I didn't, I didn't shoot near as much. Um, I spent, believe it or not, I spent a lot more time shooting 22 targets, um, and just spending time behind the trigger, you know, practicing squeeze control and breathing and things of that nature. So I spent a little more time shooting something I could afford to shoot. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, three to four weeks, normally I start out about four weeks before competition. And then I start at about anywhere from, uh, five to 10 rounds a day, uh, is all I shoot. I'll go shoot one target system and maybe two targets and then i take the day the rest of the day off and i go home and clean course, you can do that now that i'm retired right yeah and, that sounds uh, like the dream uh, man <laughs> it, well, it is it's, it's not a, it's not a bad gig it's not a bad gig. this podcast is brought to you by thor bullets thor bullets are a premium full bore muzzleloader bullet designed specifically for modern inline rifles thor bullets do not require plastic sabos or belts to be fired meaning less cleaning for you between shots The patented copper base creates an airtight seal, giving you greater distance and accuracy. Thor's unique engineering allows the bullets to retain 95% of their weight upon impact, and the controlled expansion ensures large, easy-to-follow blood trails. Thor bullets are currently available in a 50 caliber version that is sized to your specific bore. Thor is also expanding into a new 45 caliber bullet designed for faster 1 in 24 and 1 in 22 twist inline rifles. For more information on these great bullets, visit www.thorbullets.com. We'd like to thank Thor Bullets for their sponsorship of this podcast. So what's next then for you? You've got the the Nashers under your belt. Are you returning in the fall? Oh, absolutely. I'll be there. Okay. With bail zone. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll, once again, I'll be shooting, uh, the CBA. So, uh, we're excited about it. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, doing some testing of the new, uh, ELRs. Uh, so, um, I'm waiting on some of those to get here now. Awesome. And, uh, so I, I'm excited about it. Uh, I flew out to Idaho, uh, spent some time. Um, and shooting and testing out there. So, uh, I believe that I'm going to be able to make that, uh, bullet shoot. Um, and like I said, it's a great hunting bullet. Uh, you know, I would probably, if, if it were up to me, and of course I, you know, I don't have any say so in any of that, but I would probably up that to maybe a 250 grain bullet versus a 225 grain bullet. Mm-hmm. A little course, heavier, with a little heavier bullet. Um, but you know, if it shoots and you can you can get it to shoot at 225 then you're you know that 35 to 3600 feet per second is where a lot of people like to be and and like i said for a deer hunting it's it's fine that's going to be great but um it's just uh it's just one of those things where i'm just going to have to learn this you know this new technology and you know i was for forever when i started out up there years ago i was casting my bullets and shooting a 530 grain grease groove bullet on top of about 74 grains of uh 3f swiss mm-hmm. uh and a 1 in 18 twist uh one of the old team guns right uh, 19 guns so you know i've done i've done all of it so it's it's kind of coming full circle and i'm finding that you know heavy bullets seem to work a little better than lighter bullets uh, especially in your when you're playing that steel game yeah um, so, but it's, uh, it's all good. And like I said, we're really excited and, uh, um, I'm going to be doing, uh, 
you know, a, a lot of, a lot of different stuff and, and going, I'm, my, my plans are, uh, or I think their plans, I'm, I'll be uh, probably at SHOT Show and I'll be going to Harrisburg uh, and doing some uh, shows for CBA and oh, talking wonderful. to people and answering questions and uh, sharing my experience. Yeah, that's great. So do you think this could kind of, uh, you know, give the, I guess, industry competition scene a little, a little jump start, you know, now that there's a, you know, kind of CVA has kind of entered the ring here and kind of changing things up. Do you think we'll see some more folks send some sponsored shooters or, or do you think they're ready for that yet? I, you know, I don't know. And I think it's so new right now to BPI and, and, uh, you know, that group, I, I don't know if, if that's something they're interested in. Uh, I will tell you this. I've had several uh, pretty well-known competitors ask me uh, what I thought about. Uh, could I help them get on staff? <laughs> <laughs> and I, and uh, uh, that would said they would shoot their gun. So, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, we're going to relay all that stuff. So I don't know whether it'll happen this year, but it could very well happen next year uh, where you might see a team of, you know, three to four shooters uh, shooting for uh, CVA. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's interest out there of people that, you know, are really good shots and that have a really good reputation in the uh, the field of shooting that uh, they may uh, – you know, maybe something they want to do, or they may just be satisfied to um, stick with one and, you know, one and done. I don't, I don't know. You know, it's just, uh, that's way above my uh, pay grade is those things. Right. <laughs> so I guess my, my last question for you, Barry, is you've got this gun shooting lights out, you know, what, what kind of tips or recommendations would you have for somebody out there? that he's either looking at getting one or is getting one and, and isn't quite there with it yet. You know, they're, they're, they've played with it some and they'd like to get a little bit more out of it. You know, what, what would you like to say to some folks out there like that? Well, you know, I've, I'm like everybody else. I've read, I've read post after post after post on four or five different websites and I'll go on occasionally and I will su make a suggestion. Uh, now there, there are some people and, you know, I, we're, you haven't asked it, but you know, I can tell you that I've examined my gun and I don't have anything wrong with my gun whatsoever. Uh, but I'm, there are people that have claimed that they've got problems with their gun. And the only thing I can say is, um, you know, rather than be a keyboard warrior and get on there and you might want to spend more time shooting and less time reading. Because, <laughs> uh, and I mean, I, and I, I don't mean that in a mean way, right. but uh, it, it is what it is. And and you and I both know, I mean, you're in the, you're in the field and, you know, um, uh, I've seen some of the stuff you do a lot of testing yourself. Uh, the gun shoots great. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, um, uh, Jody Baxter, uh, came by and, um, spent some time with me and he had a, a he had a new paramount that he brought over and he said, Hey, uh, I don't know anything about this thing really. Uh, I'm, I've got it from muzzleloaders.com and mm -hmm. he's doing some field staff testing for them. And I said, well, let me, let me work with you here a little bit. And within probably 10 minutes, uh, I of course use a load that I know to be a, a really good one. Uh, I provided him with some of the bullets that, uh, I'd brought with me and he was literally shooting the X out. Yes. Uh, just one big ragged hole in the X. And he said, man, this gun shoots. I said, I told you it shoots. He was talking to me uh, about that some when he got that in, when they sent that out for him. And, and he was doing some testing at home and he had gotten it, you know, lined up and everything, but he was a little nervous about coming down and competing. And then he sent yeah. me some of the targets that he'd shot. And I, I thought, man, he must've been talking to Barry down there because the, the change was night and day and he didn't change anything about the gun. You know, it wasn't, no. he didn't go in through and, and replace, you know, the breech, the barrel, the stock, the trigger, you know, and have a no. whole new rifle coming out of it. You know, it's that trigger no. time is, is so important, especially well, with a muzzle and, and loader. And that is, you know, um, one of the things I found that, uh, for me, um, and I know you've watched a lot of the videos, uh, loading pressure is a huge thing for this gun. Uh, 
Okay. And, you know, they would say when you load it, go down to hit the powder and then put that extra little push on it till you hear the click or and and what that basically is doing is you're forcing the powder up into the bottom of that skirt on the tire belt bullet. And okay. now you're disruptive to the base of the bullet. And if you've been a caster or if you've ever cast your own bullets, you know that if you're casting a bullet and you drop a bullet while it's still hot and you dent the bottom of it, you might as well just put that bullet back in the smelter and cast another one because it's not going to fly right. And if you put five pounds, even five pounds more loading pressure on one bullet than you put on the, the other one, now you've raised the pressure and the muzzle velocity. So now, you know, when the bullet muzzle velocity goes up 50 feet per second, now your point of impact changes. So then you've got two that are almost touching, and then you've got this flyer over here to the right. So okay. um, I did I did some testing when I was out in Idaho at Acura, and I had one of their guys load the way they load, and then I loaded the way I loaded, and then we shot a three-shot group, each shooting the same lot of powder, the same gun, actually shooting the same exact gun, and I consistently had tighter groups. So hmm. I would recommend just – Load the bullet, and when it hits the powder, get off of it. And don't put any pressure on it. Uh, don't do anything to disrupt the base of that bullet. And and I'm that same attitude with any bullets, whether you're riding a bore size bullet or whether you're shooting, uh, you know, the factory bullets, whatever. So okay, that's but, some uh, great. That's some great advice. I guess I I need to ask because that's something I have not tried yet. Is how are you measuring that pressure? Is that just all by feel? You're just you're feeling that when it hits the powder. Okay. It is. It's all by feel, and it's and it's just years of doing it. Uh, you know, I I used to tell people that you know uh, these guns will perform, but you got to let the gun tell you what it's going to do. And if you try to push it or stretch it, you're going to get some uh, bad groups out of it. And, and and another thing, a lot of people, uh, and that's the reason a lot of we shoot wads on top of the powder okay because we want we want it consistent and i did i shot a wad on top of the powder instead of just shooting the bullet to bore um because blackhorn has a different burn rate than regular black powder uh so it needs to be compressed a little bit so that it'll ignite because sometimes if it's not compressed then you're going to get up uh, where the primer is going to go off and the bullet may move off the powder column uh, an inch or two, but it didn't ignite because of the disruptive of whether you're using a large rifle or a large rifle magnum or 209. And that's with any, with any inline. Okay. So, uh, what I like to do is I like to use the same loading pressure. And the only way I can do that is when, and as soon as I feel it hit, I quit pushing. And, uh, so then when I'm not pushing, then I'm getting way better ballistics. And like I said, uh, I know not everybody's going to go out and run and buy a lab radar, but uh, for me, it's taught me more about my gun than I would have ever known myself by just testing and shooting through just a standard uh, chronograph. Yeah, you get so much more information out of those. It's it's on my list to add, just, just to kind of understand more of this. I mean, I love... I, I mean, I especially like old muzzle letters too, but I love kind of getting into the nerdy data side of it because yeah. it's, it's just something you can dive into. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, cool, man. That, that was really, really great, Barry. I can't thank you enough for, for taking the time to talk with me about this. I'm so excited. Absolutely. It's, it's always a pleasure to get to see you. And I miss seeing you at the national uh, shoot and you up there with your video, with uh, you up there with your video. And so it's, uh, but it's good to always catch up. And that's the reason I, just reached out to you. I, I just wanted you to come down and see the gun. And I actually was going to let you shoot my gun. Well, we'll make uh, a point to, to do that in September then. Okay. That's great. That's great. It'll be good to see you and catch up. Yeah. We can, we can talk some more in person there. Yeah. I'd love to see your, see your setup and, and see you send some down range. That'd be great. If you're going to grow this sport, we're going to have to get more shooters involved. And mm -hmm. you as, as well as everybody knows that uh, the average age of the people that are shooting, and I think we have between 950 uh, shooters, this registered shooters. But the problem is people that come up there for the first time, they throw them all in the big boy class, 
and they come in there and they shoot and they don't have a chance of winning anything. Yep. You know what's going to happen? They're not going to come back. Yep. They're going to say, well, you know, I can't compete against you or I can't compete against this guy. So why should I want to come back? Why should I want to pay my money if I don't have a chance to win anything? So what I've projected and what I've proposed was that we create a class almost identical to what the uh, black powder cartridge shooters are. You've got a 4A shooter, 3A shooter, 2A shooter, single A, which is a beginner. And your first time, you're classified based on known ability. Or if it's your first time, you're in the bottom class. So you have a chance to win. And um, we've even offered, because I, I did that with my events down here, because I had First time I had, I think, around 24 or 25 shooters show up for my event. And uh, I feed you lunch. Uh, we give a gun away. At that time, we were giving a gun away, uh, just drawing. You didn't have to shoot for it. And, of course, we did the medals and the plaques, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a lot of out, outside uh, resources that contributed money to, to make it go. Yeah. And, of course, of course, we're a charter club. The Chilhai Rod Gun Club is a, is a charter club, the NMLRA. So we we're able to, to host these things. And I said, you know, what I'd like to do. And then, of course, the second event, I had like 20. The next one, I had like 16 or 18. And so I started calling people. I said, hey, what's going on? I, I thought you were really into this. And I said, you know, I've called you and you told me, well, you might be there. You might not. You know, yada, yada. And I said, well, Barry, I'll be Ross. Why would I want to come and shoot against you? <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean? You're not, you're not shooting against me. Yeah, we are. We're, you know, the bottom line is uh, we're shooting uh, outside of our class. And so I created a class, and, I, and I, I pictured it right after the NRA classes, master class, sharpshooter, you know, all that same stuff. And so the last event, I had 29 people show up. That's so, great. Uh, and, and these people now, they have a chance to win. Yeah. And it's not like a golf tournament where you're sandbagging. I mean, I, you know, I tell people, you know, come do the best you can. Hopefully you will progress with your skill set or with your rifle, and you'll move up to the next class until you get to the point where you feel like you can compete with anybody because you've got the skill set to do so. Mm -hmm. And it's, believe it or not, the the people are really excited about it. And, and that's one of the things that I wanted – the NMLRA to do was to classify this so that a, a new guy coming for the first time gets a true experience of what friendship's like, uh, how helpful people are, and uh, they get to shoot and still have a chance to win something. I mean, it's not like it, I'm asking for somebody to do a participation trophy like they do in Little League football. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if, if you've got, uh, I don't expect a guy to come in with a, a $100 a uh, muzzle loader and compete against a four thousand dollar or five thousand uh, dollar custom build one off uh, muzzle loader. So you know that's that's kind of where I'm trying to take the game and and as far as promoting uh, muzzle loader shooting, that's one of the things I'm trying to do. And and uh, so I'm excited about that, the promoting end as well as the shooting side. So that's where I see it going because I mean I, I've got my Acura, and I would love to see some more matches with participation for for the hinge guns you know that's what yes, a lot of folks absolutely. that's how they get started that's how they get into it now i've been eyeing you know the things like the the paramount and 40 and the peregrine just because i'm a fan of 40s and i uh -huh. i think what they do is really interesting you know just seeing the 40 caliber come back uh right. to, to the to the high-end guns but those the you're gonna i think more people out there are gonna have and be more familiar with, you know, kind of the more budget friendly options, at least for a while now. And it'd be great to see them shooting from, you know, 50 to 200 yards like they would when they were hunting. And I think that only right. does a, a service to the sport to give those guys and those hunters and those shooters another reason to come out rather than just, you know, just hunting. Not that just hunting is a bad thing, but if you can get them right. out for a couple of weekends out of the year, uh, to go shoot and compete and have fun and, and make some more friends. And it just helps everything grow. It does. And, and that's really what we should be doing uh, as competitors, growing the sport and getting more people involved. And, and I told him, I said, look, if you won't classify the shooter, classify unlimited and hunter. Yes. You know, if you've got an unlimited class, then, and they said, well, you know, then we'd have to change. We have to freeze the national records because, 
this or that. And I said, well, you know, here's the thing for me. You'll make more money because a guy like me, I'll shoot in the hinge gun class and I'll shoot in the bolt action class. I'm going to shoot in both. So you're going to get double money. I'm going to shoot more than one hunter event. Yeah. And I said, and there's a lot of other people I know would do the same thing. I mean, I, I don't really agree with the idea that letting a hinge gun compete is going to tarnish the records keeping. No, I'm, oh, there's I, no absolutely. way. I, I guess I, it's not impossible, but I don't really see somebody going out with a hinge gun and shattering the record and changing how that was played. You know, and, and even if it does, what? What's that really changing? Right. You know, if we want to keep playing the same game over and over again, that's fine. But to me, getting more shooters involved is is really where the value is. And if you want to keep your records, you know, get back in the game. It's kind of how I look right. at it. <laughs> and maybe. Uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm with you, and uh, and and you know, for me, it's like I'm not above trying it. Yeah. You know, I I uh, they sent me a new MRX. 50 cal and uh okay i i'm i'm a guy that uh really had to spend a lot of time with uh the break open action guns after i left uh thompson center and you know went tonight then uh, i thought you know break open actions they shoot pretty good uh but i shot this new mrx and i was using the uh, 50 caliber elrs and i put 90 grains uh, by volume, just went to the range. I just, I you never know, shot one of these. So I'm going to shoot one. See, you know, they send it to me. I'm going to see what. I put three in the same hole at 50 yards. Yeah. And I went, dang, this gun shoots. I mean, it really shoots. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I'd, and I'd put a, a cheap scope on it. I just, you know, one I had laying around the house, I came back and I put a Huskamall on it. Okay. And uh, I said, you know, I'm going to take this thing hunting. I put a four by 16 on it. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to hunt with this thing. And, uh, so you're going to see me in the woods this year when it comes hunting season, uh, carrying a break open action gun and hunting with it. Hey, hey. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I haven't hunted with a 50 in several years. Okay. Uh, and I've, I've been a 45 guy and I'm still a 45 guy, but, um, I, I like the 40 awful well. So, you know, uh, you'll see me probably going back and forth from one to another. So that's the uh, fun about it, man. You can absolutely. That's what I like about it. There's depending on the mood I'm in, there's a muzzleloader out there that I can go and shoot. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you know, it's funny because this year while I was up there, I, I spent a little time down on the offhand lane mm -hmm. uh, line and I was watching the guy shoot the silhouettes and I've got a really neat little 32 caliber, uh, half stock Hawken that mm -hmm. I bought a couple of years ago and I really haven't spent any time with it, but I'm going to be spending a little time with it, uh, and, and kind of practicing on my offhand shooting. And I may try to get in some of this old game stuff, you know, uh, and, and, and that's the thing about getting to friendship and somebody said, Hey, come shoot this gun or if you want to shoot this splinter, you know, whatever. And you go, wow, man, this is a lot of fun, you know? And, and that's what it's all about meeting new people. And, and I always, every time people come over by, you know, by my gun, if it's like in the afternoon when I've already stopped shooting and maybe I'm, I'll let people come by and say, Hey, uh, what, what is that gun? It, you know, it looks like a Remington 700. Well, it's a 700 platform. But, um, I said, would you like to shoot it? Have you ever shot an inline? Nope. Never shot one. And I normally shoot on the, chunk line i said okay well come around right there here and let me sit down and i'll dial it for them and of course i know where all the numbers are and i yeah. i say you shoot that ram up there at 500 yards and they go are you serious and i go yeah and they'll say you know i'll tell them you know hold to about two minutes left you've got about a eight to ten mile an hour wind out there and uh they'll shoot it and knock it off the wall and they say can i do that again <laughs> I said, sure. And, uh, well, where do you buy those? You know, we well, can buy this at any hardware stores. Those things goes, but yeah. now some of those over there, you're going to have to go see, you know, Jeff Fisk or some of these other builders, uh, to get one, one of those guns. But, yeah. um, but it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's a great sport and, and I enjoy it and I enjoy the people and, uh, we all get together, even though we're fierce competitors with one another, we go eat lunch together and, and, uh, we just, 
we have a good time together and that's what it's all about and and that's what my hopes are for us guys like you and myself that, that have a little voice in the in the field can go out and recruit new shooters and get people to come and experience uh, what friendship's truly all about yeah yeah because as, as much as the competition is there in the history and the records you know of of who did what and when uh still i, I think everybody agrees that when the day is over and, and you go share a meal with with the people that you're shooting with um you know and share stories and catch up that's really that's the gold right there I'd like to thank Barry again for coming onto the show and talking with us. And I'd like to send CVA a thank you as well for getting into the competitive scene here. When CVA got into the long range muzzleloading scene with the Paramount a few years ago, they caught some flack from some critics for not getting involved in the competitive scene. So uh, I think it's really exciting for the sport to see CVA come on board to the competitive scene and bring home the gold in their first national outing. I think uh, they couldn't have picked a better ambassador here with Barry. I mean, he's a fierce competitor, but as you heard there, he really cares about growing the sport and getting more people involved. So we can see these traditions carry on as we move forward. Barry is active on Facebook, and uh, you can follow the CVA team on just about all of the social media platforms. I'm excited to see just a classic marksman here, kind of out front here with CVA. I think it's an exciting time for the muzzleloading competition scene and for muzzleloading hunters out there. I think this is the kind of exposure that can really get some more people involved, like I said, with shooting their muzzleloaders a little bit outside of hunting season and enjoying the sport and the community and, and everything that it has to offer. You know, getting some folks behind muzzleloaders and, and exchanging, you know, the enthusiasm about muzzleloaders, whether you're interested in the traditional or the modern, you know, going and sharing a meal or, or an evening in a campfire with somebody to talk muzzleloading and, and just things in general, I think, is, is the kind of thing that we need culturally right now. Um, you know, as kind of crazy as things are, kind of that return to, you know, some just classic people to people time and sharing interests and hobbies, I think is really important for us. So that's all I have for you this week. I can't thank you enough for listening. If you'd like to learn more about this or anything else related to muzzleloading, you can visit ilovemuzzleloading.com. We'll have some more information there about Barry and the CVA team here bringing home the gold. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time.